Discovering the Super Mario 64 costume in Mario Odyssey was a pretty big surprise to me and other players, and an even bigger surprise when Peach's Castle Courtyard showed up next. Super Mario Galaxy 2 gave us a similar throwback by remaking Womp's Fortress. But other than that, other key Mario games have only referenced Super Mario 64 through reused characters like bob -Oms. Since we finally have some new throwback contents to analyse, why don't we take it the extra mile by digging deep for all those hidden details? Then again, why don't we compare all three castle courtyards? The original from Super Mario 64, the remake in Super Mario 64 DS, and finally, the high-definition Mario Odyssey port. Super Mario 64 was released on June 23, 1996, making the design of Castle Courtyard at least 22 years old. But can we narrow it down any further? Well, we can get an easy clue by taking a look at the internal level IDs in Super Mario 64's debug menu. The level IDs are numbered seemingly by the date they were created, something I talked about a little in another video. Castle Courtyard's internal name is Urinawa, with the ID 26 out of 36, meaning it was likely designed during the last quarter of level development. According to Wikipedia, Super Mario 64 took three years to develop, with one year spent on the design concept and two on direct development of the game's software. Based on the full description of the development cycle on this page, my best guess would be that the Castle Courtyard was finalised anywhere as late as maybe December 1995, but the original concept was probably designed in 1993. Anyway, let's dive into Super Mario 64 and figure out everything we can about this area. I think a good place to start is to count all the objects loaded into Castle Courtyard and compare it with each version. Alright, let's see. There are 16 spiky trees, 10 boos that appear when you have 12 stars, 9 coins, 4 signs, and a level entrance to Big Boo's Haunt. There are also two bird sound effects in the garden and a cricket sound effect coming from the fountain. A strange choice of positioning if you ask me. Next we'll move on to Super Mario 64 DS, released in 2004, 8 years after the original. Most levels in the remake boast improved graphics over the original, but Castle Courtyard has remained much the same besides some new objects and a small model change. Unlike Super Mario 64, Castle Courtyard on the DS was likely one of the first areas ported with an internal ID of just 3, preceded only by the debug stage and main hub. Rather than cluttering our map, let's create a differential analysis, meaning we can skip the trees and signposts which are in the exact same positions. The boos, on the other hand, have been more evenly scattered around the garden this time with two extras in the pond and most containing red coins for a new star. This time they won't appear until you have 15 stars, one tenth of the game's total 150 stars, just like Super Mario 64 required one tenth of its 120 stars. There are two Mips rabbits holding minigame keys here now, one that runs around the fountain and one inside the new opening in the wall. 34 coins can be collected here, the most out of every past and future rendition of Castle Grounds, although the HUD counter showing your coins is hidden. Other changes include a new level entrance, three unused warps for the cancelled multiplayer, and as we can see in the editor, the bird sound effects were moved to a more reasonable position. Interestingly, Nintendo chose to use the N64 version of Castle Grounds for Super Mario Odyssey, rather than the newer DS version or a remake like Super Mario Galaxy 2's Throwback Galaxy. It was released a full 21 years after the original Castle Courtyard, or up to 23 since it was conceptualized. The four trees on the pavement have been swapped for chests, with eight in total. Combination chests were first introduced in Super Mario 64, making this area a reference to both Castle Courtyard and Jolly Roger Bay where they first appeared. This is also a parallel to the eight red coins inside the DS Castle Courtyard booze, making it a reference to both previous renditions of Castle Courtyard. Each chest contains a Chincho, a mummy-like enemy, which seems to be a substitute for the booze usually in Castle Courtyard. 
Super Mario Odyssey doesn't contain any do-like enemies, unlike most key Mario titles, nor any other undead types except for these mummies. The other new objects include 6 coins in a ring, 2 power moons disguised as power stars, and 3 secret hearts. Lastly, all but one sign has been removed, and one was replaced with a boulder containing one of the hearts. Strangely, this sign gives you a similar jumping hint to the original, despite being past the end of the game in Mario Odyssey. Nintendo sometimes provides more advanced advice midway through a game, but Castle Courtyard is accessible from the very beginning in Super Mario 64. As for the other two hearts, they are hidden in the ground where both level entrances were in Super Mario 64 DS, making this the second DS Castle Courtyard reference. If you include the 9 coins from the hearts, and 6 from power moons, they total at 21, which is still more coins than the original N64 Castle Courtyard. There are a grand total of 64 coins across all 3 Castle Courtyards. Could this be an easter egg or just a coincidence? I'm not sure what the significance of this is, but I also noticed that every set of coins is in a group of three, except for Odyssey's coin ring, even the hearts and the stars. Now that we're done analysing objects, let's take a look at the actual structure of the castle courtyard. In the original N64 version, there is a small collision map room behind the castle door. This room was removed from the DS version, and a lot smaller in Odyssey, although we can't test for a collision map. Whilst we're looking at the collision map, notice how Super Mario 64 DS is the only version with a roof preventing you from jumping too high. In Super Mario 64, there is normally an invisible wall, but by using a cheat code I wrote to remove this wall, we can jump over and find that there's a big invisible lake under the level. Super Mario Odyssey is similar, but instead they've added a regular wall which disables wall jumping in case you make it too high. Lastly, something about the famous L is real plaque seems a bit odd to me. If we zoom in, you can see that there are actually two layers with the same texture. I would have said this was done in order to create a fake 3D effect, but then why is the back texture lighter than the front? And why not just make a regular 3D shape out of polygons? It's not like Castle Courtyard is a complex area that would place any kind of strain on the graphics processing. Even stranger, this same effect was used in all three versions of the Castle Courtyard. Before we finish, let's take a step back and instead see how the Castle Courtyard appears from the outside in. In Super Mario 64 DS only, a texture behind the hallway door is used to make it look as though you are walking out into the Castle Courtyard, even though the area is not yet loaded. If we compare this texture to the Courtyard itself, we can see several differences such as missing trees, darker sky, a wider fountain, missing Ellie's real text, and the texture is doubled up for some reason. There's no particular meaning to any of this though, just another observation. Anyway, that's everything there is to know about Castle Courtyard. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more interesting videos like this one, plus some games and apps I'm working on. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!